something that excites me every single day that you wake up. There's always some new ideas that creep into your heart. There's something new that inspires you that you can't wait to go to your studio and just see how this idea goes. Last few years was, I would say, it's quite um, uh, hectic for me because I was doing so many things at the same time. I was painting, I was designing, I was teaching, and so it's everything's all lump up into one big kind of project for me. So it was really busy because I was uh, teaching, of course, uh, but I managed to kind of do a lot of shows in between that. I travel a lot. Uh, it's been hectic, but it has been a very interesting journey, of course, because you, you are very focused basically on your art at the same time. So you kind of, as while you are teaching, you are also kind of uh, developing ideas at the same time, you know. So it's, it's kind of a thing you have to juggle, which is not an easy thing, but it's been enjoyable. It's been very fruitful for me. Basically, the whole idea actually is, is really a sum up of about 50 years of work. It's a sum up really. So I would like to call this particular kind of period of work uh, as mosaic. But if you look at it, it's really a mosaic of all the different kind of things that I've done. It's like a mosaic anyway. Uh, so in that respect, it's not a series really. It's really a continuation. It's really a progression of thoughts that stem up almost 50 years ago. And it continuously evolve, change, and it finds its own direction to what it is right now. So what you see is really a mosaic based on that time frame. Most abstract artists, I believe, or even in, in general, most artists are basically using nature in one form or another as a way to, to generate uh, inspiration, as ideas for their work. So it's make no difference for me being an abstract painter because as I see a lot of things in nature that are equally abstract that I could use as forms, as shapes, as texture, that could shape up the way how my work would, uh, would be. So it's, the whole idea of looking at nature is not to copy really. Again, it's really to be inspired. So looking at nature is really uh, getting a better understanding of how nature works, of how things work in nature and how you could probably learn something from there and see how you could use it in your work. Nature is really like the grand scheme or ideas in, in most creative work, even in poetry you see that, in theatres, in music also you see that. People look at nature as a way to be inspired. A lot of my earlier work, if you look at the work that was done as early as the 70s, a highly, highly structured kind of, of work. The grid is very, very uh, strongly seen as a way to do things. But as I move on, as I evolve and as I change, I find that I could still use grid, but do not kind of, not to kind of uh, make it look literally there. But it's all there, but you don't really see because it's all kind of hidden in the, in the, in the scheme of things in the painting. Uh, for, for example, if you look at some of the new works that's on the show, the one that is called, if I'm not mistaken, called Fragmented Memories. That is a work that you can see evidence of how the, the grid structure has kind of break loose, but you could sense there is kind of grid kind of structure in the work, but it's not really as obvious as in the earlier works. And again, you see in other works, there are a lot of things that are much more looser. But you sense that the grid is always there, but it's not really obvious. It's kind of, uh, it, it's kind of uh, uh, hidden in a way. But if you look closely, it's very structured actually. And also if you look at in the, the round painting, it was actually, it was a way how, I'm trying to find a way how to break away from this rigidness of the grid. Uh, I did a painting somewhere in the mid-90s, I think. If I'm not mistaken, it's called Wind Reef. Where the painting just kind of take off from the center and kind of ex explode itself towards the edges. 
the, the way how the painting was composed. And then I begin to realize that if that is the case, why don't I make a round painting? Because then you don't see, you, you don't see, uh, you know, where it comes from because it's really from the center, you know? So it, you don't see any more of the grid anymore. So the round painting, if you look at it, painting like Koi, for example, or many other paintings like Obit, for example, you see where everything just kind of, kind of evolve from the center. But there is a kind of an underlying structure in the work. If you look at it, everything seems to connect and tie itself and relate itself into some kind of a structure. It's not as obvious as the grid of the earlier works. I think the best way to explain about abstraction really uh, and to make people really understand it at least in a general term is to really un look at music because music is equally very very abstract. If you look at a, a composition by Mozart or by Bach or by all the great musicians or any music, jazz even for example, they are all very abstract really. Yeah? But the underlying uh, way how all these things work is that it's a way of how to organize sound, or I would say chaos, and create a certain order out of it, and to create a certain kind of a harmony within this chaotic scheme of things. And once you do that, you have achieved some kind of a balance uh, in the way how that music is supposed to be heard, or how a painting should look. A painting is, is something like that. It, it is kind of a, a way of how one organizes a chaos and create a kind of a visual structure that has balance, that has harmony, that has contrast and depth and so on and so forth. Each work will have its own way of how one would interpret it and that makes it much more interesting. Then it becomes a dialogue between you as a viewer and the work of the artist. So you do not have to kind of conform to the, to the, to the, to the view of the artist. The artist is there not to satisfy your view, but he's trying to express something from his deep, from his own inner self, and to express something that he could share. And it's up to the viewer to see how that can connect with him. So he's always looking at form and meaning in the work. Some people just look at form and may not be able to to kind of digest its meaning. We just look at beautiful forms. Yeah, some may look at forms and begins to see how that forms relate to him as a person, as an individual and find their own narrative or story that they could create from that form. So for me as an artist, uh, the, the bottom line of course is to create a work that may look chaotic but there's a sense of tranquility within all this, there's a sense of calmness, there's a sense of, of meditativeness in the work which I'm looking for. The journey that I go through is challenging. It is something that excites me every single day that you wake up. There's always some new ideas that creep into your heart. There's something new that inspires you that you can't wait to go to your studio and just see how this idea goes. So it's, it is, that, that is the thing that, 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 is, that is exciting about being an artist because you know, you're just constantly pushing your own boundaries, your own energy, your own creativity, your own ideas, your own thought. You are just kind of exploring all this, you know, and that's so exciting. Art is basically is a very lonely, if you want to call it as a profession, <laughs> it's a very lonely profession because you are just within you, you and your, you and the canvas, nothing. There's no audience really. The audience comes not really as an audience, but it's just people who connect with your work. I wouldn't even want to call them as an audience, you know? But it's just that people who look at your work and they say, that I, I connect with this work, I connect with your thoughts, I connect with your ideas. I mean, that's good, I said. You know, so what you're doing is really as an artist is, I'm presenting a worldview, a very personal worldview. And everybody has a worldview, I believe. It's just that one can express that worldview, another person maybe doesn't have a means to express it. Like, an, like any other artist, whether you're a visual artist or whether you're a, you're a musician, you make your art, whether it's music or whether it's painting. But at the end of the day, it is the people to find that connection through the music or through the art, that's all.